Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today we're going to look at the basis of the sacrament of the sick and its scriptural reference. And this comes to us from the letter of James chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. The scripture says, Is anyone among you suffering? They should pray. Is anyone in good spirits? They should sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? They should summon the presbyters of the church, and they should pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven. The word of the Lord. Friends, in the Catholic Church, of course, we have our seven sacraments. And one of the two sacraments of healing is that of the sacrament of the sick. Now, this was instituted by Jesus, who told the apostles to lay hands on the sick and that they would be healed. Here in the letter of James, we once again see the instruction that when people are sick, they should send for the presbyters, which is another word of, for priest, and let the priest pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. So we recognize the healing power of the Holy Spirit in this great sacrament of our church. Now, for many people, they think of it as last rites, and we've talked about this in our sacrament series. If you missed that, go back and search for it because they were seven awesome podcasts, if I do say so myself. But nonetheless, we see the power of the Holy Spirit in this healing sacrament and in the laying of hands. In the anointing with oil, we call upon the Holy Spirit upon the person who is anointed so that the Holy Spirit will come upon them and set them free to give them strength, to give them grace. And so in the sacrament of the sick, this is the case. But many people feel it's the last rites, and that's not the case. There is the sacrament of the sick and prayers for the dying. In the sacrament of the sick, anyone who's about to undergo some kind of a surgery or ongoing sickness or mental health matters, etc., can come forward and ask for the sacrament of the sick as we ask the Holy Spirit to come upon them to help them in mind, body, and spirit. When someone is about to die, they are asking for the prayers of the dying. That's very different, in which we prepare one soul to meet Almighty God. Here, though, in this passage, we see the instruction from a Bible and biblical perspective of why the sacrament of the sick is so important. Notice also that it is mentioned that their sins are forgiven. There's a confession component to this sacrament, and that's why it's reserved only for priests and bishops. Deacons and lay people cannot give the anointing of the sick. Someone can be prayed over, that's for sure, but in its official context, To receive the sacrament of the sick as one of the sacraments of the church, it is reserved only for priests and bishops because deacons cannot forgive sin, nor can any layperson. So when we think of this great sacrament, friends, we see that the church's response is to always pray, to pray for those who are sick, that they need to be attended to, and they need to be prayed for. This should be our focus, too. I know when I'm often called to a hospital bed or at home or in a hospice to pray with someone who is ill, sometimes facing minor or major surgery and sometimes facing significant challenges, it's so beautiful to see the family praying along with me. So that way, it's not just something that the priest does. The priest's job is to lead the prayer, but... It's the priest's job to gather the people together. So often it's the family. Sometimes it could be the nurses or doctors or healthcare professionals that are there that join in the prayer 
making the prayer all the more powerful as we join our hearts together and flood heaven and let God know of our desire to heal this person. Now, we often think in the anointing of the sick that we want the healing of one's body. And sometimes we see that healing and other times we don't. But what we have to always remember, friends, is that's not the only component to the sacrament of the sick. We have to remember that there is always a spiritual healing that we can't always see. So even when we don't receive that physical healing that we may be looking for, or sometimes we actually do, let's not forget the mental, spiritual, emotional, psychological healing that is found in this beautiful sacrament of our church as well. I love this passage myself. And I know as I pray the sacrament of the sick over many, many people, when they hear this passage from James, they almost feel relieved because sometimes people don't want to bother us, priests. Sorry to bother you, Father. I'm pretty sure you didn't ask to get sick. So it's certainly not a bother, rather a privilege for the priest to pray with them. And so as they hear these beautiful words, this permission to call upon the priest to pray for them, I often will see people a little more peaceful as they hear these words. It helps us to actually know that the power of prayer is significant and can never be overstated. Prayer is vital to the health of our souls, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, and the hearts of those who love us. In the power of prayer, we see the movement of our God who continues to reign over us and to have a vested interest in what's going on in our lives. So I encourage each of us to not only reflect upon this powerful passage from the letter of St. James, but to never be afraid to call upon your local priest and humbly ask him when you're facing any time of trial, as I mentioned earlier, to receive the sacrament of the sick, to receive that healing grace of God, to be forgiven for one's sin, and to be refreshed in mind, body, and spirit. May each of us use this healing sacrament, friends, for its purpose. May we never be afraid of the power of our God and quickly call upon him in times of need especially when we are dealing with those who need our help this day, those who are sick. For God's Playbook, friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.